In the last tutorial, we looked at common functions we can add to our templates in WordPress. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at adding more to our widgets and doing more with functions. So let's go ahead and install that particular um, set of files. Oh boy, there's a problem. Now it seems as though I'm getting a parse error that says that there's something wrong with the functions file that I have. And the reason that I'm showing this is because this will happen a whole lot as you start to work with functions, is that things are going to break, but that's totally normal. So let's open up this file and see what's going on here. It seems as though I've got a little problem on line 29, and it's because I've misnamed the word function. If I save that and have it correct, then when I come back and actually try and run this, it will indeed work. Now that it's working, let's take a look at that functions file again and see what's going on in here. All right, now our previous function, all it had was one thing that said if, if function exists, register sidebar, um, and that was it. Now we're actually going to start to do some more with these. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these into a comment. I got to remember how to do that comment. Let's see, toggle block comment. There we go. Um, now the first one that we have here is register sidebar and you'll see that we've actually given names to our sidebars instead which I really like. So now we have sidebar main, sidebar extra and this one I think is kind of interesting too. We can actually create an array where we can create two or maybe even three sidebar um, modules and I can call it module and then it it just appends the name here and, and adds one to it. Now I've also got one here called footer info and the reason I have this here is because there are more arguments that you can add to this about how you want to affect the output of that particular sidebar. Another thing that I really like is support for featured images and you'll see that this is on the page now that we can go to the pages see those. And then here's another one that we did. This is a custom function that I created um, and all it does is echo this output. Hello world, here's my custom function. Really, really simple. Um, another one which I think is kind of cool is the ability to add something to the WP head section or um, function by default and I can actually add some other um, code into that if I want to. So it injects it into that file which I think is pretty darn cool. Anyway, let's take a look at our widgets and see the widgets that we have here. We have the sidebar main. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these features in here. Lots and lots of stuff. So we've got the sidebar main and uh, one of the things I might do is just add just a really simple one here, text, and say sidebar main. <coughs> this is the main sidebar. Yeah, we're going to be really creative here. Now I can do the same thing with sidebar extra. And then if I wanted to, I could continue to do this with all the other ones. I could go down to the modules and add something there and do f something for the footer information as well. The footer information, maybe this would have um, copyright. Two thousand thirteen Jonathan Ross. There we go. So I've got just a little bit of code in there. Now, of course, this could have HTML code if I really wanted to, which would probably be a very good option for me to have. All right, I can close that down. Close that down. All right, so now I can go to the output and see what I'm getting. Now, we're getting some stuff here, but we need to take a look and find out what is in our HTML. So here's the HTML that we've added. We're in widgets and functions now, so let's find out some of the stuff that we're doing. One of the things that we're doing is getting the post thumbnail. The question is, where is that coming from? You'll see I'm echoing actually three different post thumbnails right now. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this page that I'm on. 
and I'm going to set a featured image. So let me select a file. Um, I bet you I can find a file that would work well. <clears throat> Just so happens that if I could find the files where these things are, dun -dun -dun, there we go. I'm going to use that file. Set that featured image. Update it. Now when I go back to the post, haha, you'll see I'm getting a whole bunch of outputs of the featured image here. That's because I have how many of them in here? I have a bunch of them in here. So the first one is just get the post thumbnail. Then I have another one that says if the thumbnail exists, go ahead and output it. Plus I've got a medium size here. Here's another one that says if the post thumbnail exists, go ahead and output it. If it doesn't exist, go ahead and output a default image instead, which can be quite effective. This is another one that says if the thumbnail exists, show it, else um, do another uh, thumbnail and see. This one has an end if. Uh, you'll see that this one has if, else, if, and this one has just if and else. So it's just a different way of, of doing it. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty common I guess to to do things multiple ways in in WordPress so I just had a couple different options there and here's another one here's a shorter version that says if it has the thumbnail show the post thumbnail and echo some other information if it's not there so really all we really need is I like the one that's the if statement and that's basically it if it has a post thumbnail go ahead and show it and we can we can just take out the size um, so it's just there one of the things about the post thumbnail you should know about is that you can do individual sizes but once again you want to look up the WP codex WordPress codex to look up what this function does and what arguments you can add to that particular thing so um, another thing to look down at here is here we're getting the output of our custom function that we did create and that's working quite well here's another one that outputs any active widgets that we have or I can output an individual widget that I have like the sidebar main and down here you'll see that I'm outputting the individual widget the footer info so if I save the page now and I come back then I probably cleaned up my output a little bit because now I only have one output for the featured image and you'll see that I'm getting some of the other stuff like here is the um, output of that um, widget for the bottom the copyright at the bottom this is the output of the featured image let's go look at the other and here's the output of the custom function custom function is right there hello world then we've got the active widgets which is going to do the C sidebar main and you can see it's outputting things twice because I actually have that in the code that it outputs things a couple times um, and there's the individual widget for the sidebar widget so <clears throat> lots of different things going on with this but being able to create um, the different here we are creating the different um, sidebars widgets in your functions file allows you to use those different sidebars um, or widgets anywhere in your templates which is great um, and you can even create your own functions um, here I can even create my own functions and use them anywhere that I want, which can be really, really effective in your templates. It's like creating your own little plugin, basically. And I can also inject other things into it. In fact, I never did see if I have that code there, but I'm going to guess somewhere I've got that code. In fact, I know I'm getting that code because I, if I look at it, I've got some different uh, fonts that I'm using here. So the font that's being used here is coming on in from that Google code. And sure enough, there is the code that is coming in from um, that function that I have. So you can do a lot with these. You need to explore a little bit more about this. But hopefully this helps you understand what those function files are and what they can do. Go on to the next tutorial, and we're going to take a look at even more 
when it comes to custom fields, which is one of my real favorite things that WordPress does.